so many pieces of paper in here. Al and Rika have been on my mind uh, a lot since yesterday I went to visit them. And uh, I want you to pray for them. There's four things I want you to pray for. But Friday, uh, Rika had a freak accident and she was moving a little basket with her left foot and somehow she tripped and Al was right in the living room and she fell and hit the sliding glass door right in the middle. And she shattered her right shoulder and uh, there's a compound fracture in her arm. And I want, it's painful. Uh, I want you to pray four things. Is that the nerve endings heal, wisdom for the doctors, the bone can be set, and that uh, you pray for Al because his life has now immeasurably been changed in an instant. And uh, also there's other needs in the church. I'm thinking of uh, uh, Dave DeCuckoo's wife, who I believe is going to have surgery. I'll pray for her. And... Uh, yeah, there's always something to pray for, and you never know what's going to pop up. But for those of you who were here last week, all I need to say is ditto to Brian's sermon. And we could all go home and get on with our day. Thank you, Brian. I don't know where you are, Brian, but uh, it was a great sermon. And uh, your encouraging words were very encouraging to all of us and thank you praise team uh, I never sit down and talk with them I just give them the uh, title and look what they came up with thank you for your uh, wonderful selections that you've chosen but today I want to just quickly uh, pass on to you some more encouragement by taking a look at one of my favorite characters in the Bible, and that's Hezekiah. Some commentators think that he was the best king that Israel ever had, either before or after, and I think they're probably right. He became king at the very young age of 25 years old. He died at the age of 54 years old, if my math is right. And that means that he became sick at the young age of 39 years old. And so for 14 years, he ran a very, very good ship for Israel. He tore down many of the man-made idols, and he restored the true worship of the Lord to Israel. If you remember the serpent that was raised up on a bronze stake in the desert, uh, the people of Israel, after that passed on, they turned that into an idol, and he broke it. He said, there will be no more idol worship under my rule. He had a wonderful spiritual advisor, a mentor in the name of Isaiah. And I'm going to invite Jan Westra and Karen Gallagher to come and join me, please. And we're going to read this passage of Scripture. If I can find. I don't know where my piece of paper went, guys. It always happens. I'll use yours. I know it's in here somewhere. There it is. Okay, Karen, who are you? I'm the narrator. You're the narrator. And Jan, who are you? I am Isaiah. And I am Hezekiah. Go ahead. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to him and said, 
this is what the Lord says. Put your house in order, because you are going to die. You will not recover. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Go and tell Hezekiah, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David, says. Hezekiah, God says, I have heard your prayers and I have seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life, and I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city. This is the Lord's sign to you, what he has promised. I will make the shadow cast by the sun go back the 10 steps it has gone down on the stairway of Ahaz. So the sunlight went back the 10 steps it had gone down. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. To make a quick summary of this sermon, there's five points. And I believe, number one, that we can all identify with Hezekiah. Number two, I think that we can all relate with Hezekiah. Number three, we all need an Isaiah in our life. We all need a spiritual advisor. Number four, in the light and in the midst of all the vicissitudes of life, we all need encouragement. And number five, we all need to live a life of gratitude. And that in a nutshell is my sermon. Nevertheless, there is more to say. Now, I have been an associate pastor of Cross Point Church since 1978. And those of you who have been here a long time know the name Hubert Slagers. I think they called him Honky. And you know the name Fred Wind. I would consider these two men my Isaiahs, my spiritual leaders whom I respected very, very much. Hubert, in 1978, the denomination, after the Calvary gave me a call, Cross Point gave me a call, it was Calvary at those days, and it needed me to be examined by the classes of California South. It's called the Colloquium Doctum. The meeting was held in Chula Vista, California. Well, the morning of the classes, Hubert Slager picked us up, Reverend Al Mulder, in his gray hair, striped black suit and tie, Reverend Hal Bodie, who was the head of the chaplain, dark suit, black tie, myself, dark suit, black tie, and Hubert, black suit, tie, and Nancy. Hubert drove up in between the church and the parsonage, some of you can picture that, in his kind of half-stretch Cadillac limousine with tented windows. Folks, all we needed was a violin to put in the trunk, and you've got a picture of the Chicago Mafia uh, in Chicago, Illinois. Only this was the Dutch Holy Mafia going down to a classes meeting. Hubert's walk with God was open, it was real, it was genuine. He's been through hard times, he's worked hard, the Dust Bowl. You could see the hard work in his arthritic hands. He was widowed two times and yet his testimony was always positive. And for Hubert, God always received the glory. He had a great sense of humor. He was kind, had a ready smile, and a tremendous love for God's kingdom 
and the Christian Reformed Church. He was my kind of spiritual Isaiah. Oh, Fred Wind. Some of you are smiling, you know who he was. If you didn't know him, you're missing a lot. Another very spiritual man, a clear and open testimony to Jesus as his friend and savior, and a deep and abiding love for the church and for lost sinners. And again, kind eyes, a happy spirit, positive and very, very wise. After my dad died, 1982, I was home, alone, at our Upland home. Nancy was at work at City of Hope. I was, the kids were in school, and my dad had just passed away. There was a knock on the door. It was John Wind. He came to visit me as an elder of the church to comfort me and comfort me, he did. He said, Eric, my Jesus knows your sorrow. You just lean on my Jesus and you will be fine. That was Fred Wind. He said a prayer, we talked, and then he said a prayer and he was gone. But I will never ever forget the encouragement and the comfort that that visit gave me. As I mentioned before, we are all Hezekiahs, and you all need an Isaiah in your life. Believe it or not, I have six. Lord knows I need six. I have three prayers. Last week, Rick Gallagher, I asked for prayer to be with me today, and he had a beautiful prayer. If I need more prayer, I go to Ted and Tina. Boy, those two will follow up on uh, your prayers like uh, nothing. It's amazing, those two. And then if I really need prayer, I go over to Catherine. Catherine is my prayer. Nancy is one of my spiritual advisors. I go to her for wisdom and guidance too, and after 44 years, I would say she gets 51% credit. Now, Hezekiah, from the time he became king till 39 years old, Hezekiah did a great job. Things were moving along just fine in the kingdom. And then there was this bad, bad infection an infectious boil on his body, and it wasn't going away. And it isn't getting any better. And Isaiah comes to Hezekiah and he says, you are going to die, you will not live, so get your house in order. That's the worst news anybody can have. That is really bad news. And then it says, that Hezekiah laid on his bed and he turned his face to the wall and he wept bitterly and maybe angrily as well. And after he prayed, Isaiah came to him and he says, I come to give you good news. Hezekiah, you will live 15 more years. And they put medicine on the boil and Hezekiah recovered 100%. Now, the rest of chapter 38 is a beautiful poem. When you go home, I'd like you to read that whole poem of uh, Isaiah 38. I want to see if I can find it. I know I can. Listen to what he Hezekiah says, first of all. He says, in the prime of my life, must I go through the gates of death and be robbed of the rest of my years? I said, I will not again see the Lord in the land of the living. No longer will I look on mankind or be with those who now dwell in the world. He was so well aware that he was going to die. And then he says, I cried like a swift thrush. I moaned like a morning dove. 
My eyes grew weak and I looked to the heavens. I am troubled, O Lord, come to my aid. And then the last part of his poem is gratitude. He says, the living, the living, they praise you as I am doing today. Fathers, tell your children about the faithfulness of God. That's such a beautiful poem. Maybe if you look at your own life, you could write your own poem. News of Hezekiah's imminent death and his miraculous healing spread throughout the land. And so the son of the king of Babylon come, came to Hezekiah with his entourage to see Hezekiah and to see what has really transpired, if it was really true. And I'm going to invite Jan and Karen to come forth again and we will read this part of the chapter. Karen, once again, who are you? The narrator. Jan, who are you? Oh, I know. And I am Hezekiah. At that time, Merodach Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah letters and a gift because he had heard of his illness and recovery. Hezekiah received the envoys gladly and showed them what was in his storehouses, the silver, the gold, the spices, the fine oil, his entire armory, and everything found among his treasures. There was nothing in his palace or in all his kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and asked, What did these men say? And, and where were they from? Um... From a distant land, well, they came to me from Babylon. And what did they see in your palace? They saw everything in my palace. There is nothing among my treasures that I did not show them. Well, hear the, Lord, the word of the Lord Almighty. The time will surely come when everything in your palace and all that your fathers have stored up until this day will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. And some of your descendants, your own flesh and blood, who will be born to you, they will be taken away, and they will become eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. The word you have spoken is good. In previous days, Hezekiah expected there would be peace and security in his lifetime. This is why you need a spiritual advisor. I think Hezekiah blew it. I don't know if Hezekiah was enthralled with the fact that he was a king over a vast fortune and power. I don't know if he was smitten by pride and wanted to show off his wealth or if he was just thankful that he had a second chance at life. And obviously, he thought that he was going to live in peace and prosperity for a long, long time. Nevertheless, he blew it. He showed the king of Babylon, his son, everything. I like to say that name. It's Baladan, kind of like Paladin. Remember him? Well, of course, Isaiah comes to Hezekiah and said, what in the world were you thinking? Don't ever show your enemies your hand. Well, Hezekiah didn't know how to use his spiritual advisor. What if Hezekiah would have said, Isaiah, I have these people coming from Babylon. It's the king's son to see me. What should I do? No doubt Isaiah would have given him some very good advice, absolutely. Now, I believe with all my heart in the providence of God, question and answer eight in the catechism, that all things come to us by, all things come to us not by fate, but from God's fatherly hand. But I also believe that God gave us a brain and people to help us when we need help. 
This whole story about Hezekiah is really a story about sin. Sin is a very little word, but it's such a big word. Hezekiah's father was not the greatest king in the world. Hezekiah's reign was all about bringing down idols and restoring the worship of God to the people of Israel. He came down with a terrible and terminal cancer at the young age of 39. He recovered by God's grace, and then his own sin and pride got in the way even after his miraculous and wonderful healing. And then finally, Isaiah, Israel, came to a complete devastation and an occupation, a severe, a severe defeat of the Israel nation. Sin, sin, sin. Sin encompasses many things. There are private sins, sins that hurt ourselves and nobody knows about them. We all have them. Sins that are in relationships, sins that hurt others, and sins that hurt you. Sometimes they're known, and, by, and then sometimes they're not known. And then there are public sins, sins that hurt the community and sins that can hurt the church. In all cases, the bottom line is this. Sin hurts, and it has real consequences. There is an old Swedish saying, expression, and it's called oofta. It's kind of like a sock to the stomach, and you say oofta. That's kind of what sin is like. Sin brings exhaustion, and it brings tiredness. It weakens us, and it drains us of our strength. Sin brings fear and anxiety and bondage. Listen to Isaiah 51. When you forget the Lord your maker, you live in constant terror every day because of the wrath of the oppressor. And who might that oppressor be? None other than our ancient foe, the devil. So there you go. Now I want to give you people of Cross Point, brothers and sisters in Christ, some encouragement. I want you to find yourself an Isaiah, someone who you choose to be your spiritual mentor, your spiritual friend, your spiritual advisor. Now, Tim and Brian are very, very good spiritual people, and they're professional spiritual advisors. But there are others that come across your path, people that you admire, people you look up to. And I'm saying, Cross Point, use these people before you do something stupid. Okay? Now, I am going to move you out of your comfort zone, and I want you to repeat after me, please. You ready? I'm hurting. Can you help me? Very good. I'm confused. Can you help me? I am tempted. Can you help me? I am scared. Can you help me? I'm really happy. Can I share it with you? That's how you do it. You reach out before you do something wrong. Now, I've been around this church for close to 35 years now, and you folks are great. I know your love for the Lord is constant and true. I know that you are a very loving and a friendly people. I know of your generosity of spirit, money, and time. I know that you faithfully attend church. I look around because if you're not in your appointed seat, I know you're missing. I know that you care for the poor. I know you care for sinners, and I know you care for the community. 
And I know that you're a very smart people, very smart. And I know that you have a deep compassion for those who are hurting and grieving. And I know that over the years you have endured a great deal. God bless you so much and keep it up. But as good as all this is, this is the best encouragement that I can give you. It's coming. This is the best encouragement that I can give you. By the authority invested in me by the Church of Jesus Christ, I can tell you with all certainty that all of your sins are forgiven you because of the death and resurrection of your Savior, Jesus Christ. And you can live with God in peace and in grace. The scripture says, there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. The scripture says, nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And finally, every time you listen to the Messiah, I want you to think of Hezekiah. Because these words, if you could put those up on the screen, are in chapter 40, the very first part of chapter 40. Listen to what Isaiah is saying to the people. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed and that her sin has been paid for and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. May God add his blessing to the words of my lips and the meditation of our hearts. Amen.